The WWE Royal Rumble takes place this Saturday at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida, as two superstars look to punch their tickets to WrestleMania 40. Welcome to CBS Sports HQ. I'm Shaquille Matt Judy, joined by my tag team partners, Brent Brookhouse over at CBS Sports. And Brent, we're going to tie all the threads together heading into the road to WrestleMania. And I got to say, man, with these Royal Rumbles, it seems for not all, but most of the past 10, 20 years, it's kind of hard to believe that more than two or three guys are actually going to win this thing. But I would argue if you take every active member of the roster and make them available for this match, I could find like 10 winners to occupy the spot. How enthusiastic are you about the main event scene heading into the Rumble this year? I mean, WrestleMania season, always exciting every single year, even when you know what you're going to get even before the Royal Rumble. Last year, we knew Cody Rhodes was going to win the Royal Rumble. Like, you knew it was going to happen. The curveball came at WrestleMania when Cody lost to Roman Reigns. Now we're into the next year, Cody's still a favorite to win his second straight Royal Rumble and go finish the story against Roman Reigns. But then CM Punk comes back and how do you not have CM Punk win the Royal Rumble and headline WrestleMania? And, you know, Gunther, uh, longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time, all of a sudden is in the mix. If you start looking at some of these weird offshore sports betting sites, he's tied as the favorite to win the Royal Rumble. It, those are three guys right there, and that's not even counting, you know, Drew McIntyre, a uh, shock appearance by The Rock, who's teased a match with Roman Reigns. And that's just the men's side. The women's side may have even more potential winners because things are so open-ended there. It's it's a really exciting kickoff to WrestleMania season, and not knowing what we're going to get at WrestleMania, that's unusual, and it's, it's really fun. I, I'm excited. Yeah. Well, fortunately, there are two world titles on the men's side and the women's side. Uh, two nights of WrestleMania, two headlines. So there's an opportunity for a few of these guys and women to work their way there. Let's start with some of the names you mentioned. Punk, Rhodes, Gunther. Between those three, who would you say is the odds-on favorite to win this year's Men's Rumble and why? Oh, man, that, <laughs> that's such a hard question. I lean towards Punk because... The Seth Rollins storyline with the World Heavyweight Championship and Rollins being injured means you need momentum for that side of the WrestleMania card. The Raw side, Rollins isn't going to be in there mixing it up. He's made his whole run about being a fighting champion, and now he can't fight, but he's going to gut through to, to WrestleMania to defend his title. So Punk winning, getting to point at the sign, and then spend the next few months pointing at the sign more that just makes the most sense to me as much as you'd love to see it be Rhodes who might make the most logical sense in that how long can you build this tale of Cody Rhodes is going to finish the story against Roman Reigns you didn't do it last year do you get there without Cody winning the rumble I mean yeah you can get wherever you want to get but it's the easiest path. But I, I still lean Punk. Well, and should Cody win, that would make him only the third person in WWE history to win consecutive Rumbles, dating back to, what, 95, 96 when Shawn Michaels did it, and then 97, 98 when Stone Cold did it. So that is some rarefied air to get here. He would um, be the fourth. Hulk Hogan, 1990, 91. Yes then Michaels, Correct. then Stone I mean, you, you've, only, you've only put Cody in even uh, higher company as far as pro wrestling accomplishments go. Yeah. You mentioned Cody. Uh, there was a firm belief from a lot of fans that he was going to be the one to finally dethrone Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39 last year. And when it didn't happen, I mean pun intended but it was a nightmare for a lot of fans like this was the most believable guy with the most momentum behind him to end a reign that while super uh praiseworthy was starting to sort of peter out triple h said after the fact you know the story's never done being told and from then it felt like it became a matter of not will cody 
finish the story at WrestleMania 40, but can we actually keep the interest there for a full calendar year? I got to say now, I'm starting to feel a little hesitant about his chances between Punk returning as well as uh, Gunther starting to bubble up as a potential winner here. And we have Reigns on the verge of breaking more history. We're going to get to that shortly, but there's one other person who's really sort of prepared, who could very possibly throw a wrench in all of this. You mentioned Dwayne Johnson. He had a promo on WWE Day 1, the sort of New Year's episode of Raw, where he teased, you know, sitting at the head of the table, possibly challenging Roman Reigns in a match that's been rumored for WrestleMania for, like, consecutive years now. How likely do you think it is that The Rock, who just joined the, you know, WWE's parent company on the board of directors of TKO, what's the likelihood that he actually shows up? And if we're headed there... Does that mean that Rhodes' uh, story will not be finishing at this year's showcase? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talk and talk from The Rock himself in, uh, in interviews surrounding when he joined the TKO board of wanting time to build to that uh, match with Roman. That suggests maybe that's next year's WrestleMania. Maybe. But also to come out at Day One Raw and drop that sit at the head of the table line man it's a hard thing to ask people to hold on to that for almost a year and a half and and just wait and then you get into the implications of what does that mean for roman's title run and a whole lot more you know i don't think rock shows up in the rumble this year okay it, Last it's, thing a the Sorry. <laughs> it's a possibility but i I don't think so. I think it's more likely if Rock shows up on Saturday, he shows up after Roman Reigns wins uh, his fatal four-way. And we almost nailed that segue, but I do just want a one-word answer here from you before we move on to the fatal four-way match. Name one surprise entrant, Brent, that you suspect will show up on Saturday. Oh, my goodness. Uh, You know what? I am completely blanking on who my pick was but <laughs> but Former AEW uh, talent that is exactly right it is Andrade <laughs> uh former I... WWE superstar turned AEW AEW superstar who managed to get out of his AEW contract and the only sensible landing spot is back in WWE and the Royal Rumble is a, a place you bring guys back what about I you? don't know if my guy is healthy. I don't know if he's cleared or not. But I will say, if Big E is cleared to go, returning in his home area, he was born in Tampa, Florida, short drive over to St. Petersburg, it'd be a magical moment. And there's a very interesting Imperium New Day feud bubbling up right now that could possibly lead to like a Gunther versus Big E showdown. And I am all there for like that much mass in the ring. Let's get... To the, main, uh, to the main event title match, which will be the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defends his title against LA Knight, Randy Orton, and AJ Styles. Now, uh, the natural belief is that this is a road stop for Reigns on the trip to WrestleMania. Very few people believe that he's going to lose his title at this point. It's also interesting, you shared a fact with me. He has alternated two wins and two losses in fatal four-way matches dating back to 2014. So he is due for a win this time around. My question for you, considering that he has yet to face Orton and Styles in one-on-one matches during this recent stretch, is LA Knight the guy who has to take the pin here? Uh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> you know, there was there was a time during Roman's reign where it was kind of like, all right, he just hasn't come to the right guy to take his title. But then you got the Sami Zayn moment, and that was the right guy. You got Cody, that was the right guy. And you could make a pretty strong argument that LA Knight built himself up to that guy by getting so over with the fans, and then he got a shot, and it didn't happen. And if Roman is going to, and we'll probably get into this in a moment, but going to go for another record with the length of his title reign, he's going to need fresh challengers. Orton and Styles, those are fresh challengers and they're big names. Knight got a shot and he already lost. He's a guy who's in there where it feels like he's in there to protect the other guys from having to to take a pin. 
but also fatal four way, plenty of cheap ways to win. There's no DQ. So, you know, all kinds of outs. You mentioned Roman Reigns' title reign. You know, one thing I've noticed in this triple A, triple H helm area era of creative is that he is looking to establish guys in the history books gunther longest reigning intercontinental champion also set the record for longest rumble appearance last year going number one to the final elimination against cody roman reigns is has a reign of over 1240 days as the universal champ he's on the verge of eclipsing hulk hogan that would be on september 12th Bruno San Martino and Bob Backlund are the last two guys he can cross, but we're looking at 2028 and 2026, respectively. I think neither of us believe that'll happen. What's the likelihood that Triple H keeps this title on Roman until he beats Hulk Hogan's record in September? And I mean, if that's the direction we're going, it looks like Cody Rhodes' story is going to need at least another year. I feel like maybe the answer to that comes down to when does that rock match happen? You know, Reigns versus Rock doesn't need a title. You hear that a lot if you spend any time on wrestling Twitter. But it feels also like it kind of needs the title to be everything it could be. And if they're looking at that as not this year, but next year's WrestleMania main event, I think they just keep the title on Roman, let him get through Hogan's reign, which is really basically the most modern of those ones left to fall. That's after the territories and the old days of wrestling were done. So, you know, if it's me, I get a feeling Roman's going to take down Hogan's record. I don't know how you feel about it. I know you're a big Cody finish the story guy. I'm I'm a, I'm a hopeless optimist. It's what keeps me going. Uh, so I'm going to ride with Cody, but I, I'd be lying if I said I was fully convinced. Now, uh, we got to keep this next one short, but this ties in beautifully to one of the other title matches announced for the card, Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens for the United States title. You have Roman Reigns, who's already sort of a part-time performer. He's not on week-to-week -week television. Seth Rollins was the workhorse world champion. Now he's injured, and we're hoping he makes it to WrestleMania. Yes or no, can, Lo can the WWE afford to keep the U.S. title on Logan Paul, considering he's also not a regularly active performer that leaves only the Intercontinental title on the men's side? I mean, I feel personally like, no, you, gotta, you have to, with two champions who aren't on TV on the top, not available you need that those mid card titles available but this is logan paul's first title defense he's a global superstar as much as i think you should take the title off of him i think he's going to retain at least once yeah uh i'm riding with my man ko i just i i don't want to stomach seeing it happen last stop here before we call it a day the women's royal rumble match who who is your top candidate for winning the match this year you know i've kind of talked myself into Bailey over the past 24 hours. I think the story of her with damage control and kind of the falling out and her being the odd woman out and EO Sky having that title, it's such a natural, easy story to tell. Bailey wins. Her teammates direct her to, hey, look at look over at the other brand. But instead she challenges EO for the title at WrestleMania. And then if Bailey wins, you have all of damage control chasing her, and it's a story that goes on. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if you're buying it or if you who who are you feeling, Shaq? It's a story they've worked on for a long time, so I would like to see it executed to the fullest. So I'm on your side here, but Becky Lynch is always a reliable winner. Nia Jax has been surprisingly doing great since returning at last year's Rumble. I see Liv Morgan as a surprise return, and then we have some surprise entrances that are exciting to consider. Jade Cargill, Naomi. But we'll just have to wait and see. The 2024 Royal Rumble takes place this Saturday at Tropicana Field in Florida. Let us know who you think is headed to WrestleMania.